Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our L39ZA and we're looking at air-to-air -air weapons. So, regards air-to-air -air weapons, we've got missiles that we can carry on our outer panels. Technically we can use gun pods, but they're not really for air-to-air. -air. And we've got our internal 23mm GS23 cannon. So if we go to the armament screen, regards the cannon, all we need to know is that we've got the percentage of ammo there. Regards the missiles, we can have them on pylons 1 and 4. Air to air, we can have the RS3, which is a, 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 an old school reverse engineered sidewinder as far as I'm aware. Really old, basically really rubbish. I don't know why anyone would want to use it, but it's there for historical reasons. And we've got the APU-61 mount carrying the R60M heat-seeking missile with passive IR sensor. We can carry one on each pylons 1 and 4. Regards the range of it, then in ideal head-on conditions at high altitude against a fast aircraft, we can get about seven or eight miles out of it. In the polar opposite, if we were chasing a target low down on the deck, then we can get about one and a half miles out of it. So let's arm up with two M60s. Sorry, R60Ms. Request rearming. While that's arming, let's go and have a look at the controls Copy. that we're going to be using today. Adjust controls. We're going to be using to unsafe the trigger, weapon fire safety button there. To fire the weapon, we've got that there. We also need to adjust the ranging of our gun sight, and that's hard to do by clicking. So we're going to do that to have a control set. We're going to have that gun sight target distance increase and target distance decrease. That's all we're going to have. Okay, that's us armed up. The 23mm gun is always armed anyway. So regards to setup, we want our circuit breaker on the right here, arms up. We're going to go past the stick here and we want launch engage, ASP engage, missile engage. And we can see that we've got two weapons here selected and ready. Next, we're going to go to the sidewinder panel. We want glowing on and heating on. Now, my particular head tracker doesn't allow me to see this very well. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that I've turned that on. You can hear the tone now. And I want to also turn my master volume up for it. And it's kind of hard to see, but that knob there, drag it forward until it's completely clockwise you get a nice loud tone in that case and it's very annoying yes but deal with it next we want to choose which uh, missile we fire first either the port or starboard so the port is left starboard is right so i got to choose left and then we want our outer pylon selected so that we can fire the missiles we can deselect that there but that there like so so in regards to the gun sight here we wanted to have it on fixed as opposed to gyro for the missiles which will go over first a depression of to keep it on zero and that's all we need to know for the time being. So what we'll do is we we'll take off now and have a little aim at each other. Two, one, now. Ooh, nice and lightweight. Okay. Europe. First thing I want to show you is how to essentially lock a target and uncage the missile. So on the edge of this missile, wherever it is, down there somewhere, there is a passive IR sensor mounted on a gimbal mount that can move around at different angles. At the moment, a standard is caged to the bore sight of the aircraft, essentially a cage to the gun sight here. When I move the gun sight over the target, over a heat signal, which I'll do in a second, what it'll do is set that heat signal, uncage itself, and then it can swivel on its gimbal mount and follow the target wherever he goes within the limits of the gimbal. So first I want to show you that. There's style in front of us. Let's try and put him in our cursor and see if we can get our sensors to get a lock on him. We're going to need to get a little bit closer to the looks of it. The thing about these um, planes are they don't emit much heat, so I'm going to have to get quite close to this. Okay, so it's close enough to pick up the signal. Now it's got a lock and you can hear the change in tone. Now if I move away from him so he's no longer on the bore site, you'll see that the missile continues to track him. So even out at off-site bore angles of like that, it's still tracking him. And once it goes out of the gimbal limits, which I'll do now. Wow, that is a big gimbal limit. He's outside the gimbal limit and now we've lost the lock. Next thing I'm going to show is the ranging. Now this is just read straight out of the manual. It's probably not something I'll do in reality, but we're going to try it. That is, I want to set my gun sight distance to maximum. So it's those two buttons we showed earlier. So I'm going to set it to maximum and you can see that these little carrots here go to go as small as they can go. Now again, according to the manual regarding range, the hostile's wingspan wants to be between half and two thirds of this circle created by these diamonds. So I'm going to- Half and one third actually. Half and one third. Yeah, Roger. So I'm going to let you get away now. And weapon safety off. Okay, so we're going to get him about half half the distance of this inner circle, which we've got now. And box two, missile out. 
and we blasted him. So that was the idle range, and you can see we've still got a lock, and it is now out of gimbal limits. So that was the missiles. Stoll, is there anything you want us to add to the missiles? Yeah. Right, we're now going to go around again and try our guns. So just out of good practice, I'm going to turn all of my Sidewinder stuff off now. Him off, him off, him off, and if I can see him, him off. We're now just going to use our gun, so we need to arm our cannon. Turning around now to go meet Stoll. Now I need to charge the gun, so I'm going to click GS charge here. Quick test fire. Right, so let's go back to the base. So now we've got a gun set up, we want to get our gun sight at up, set up for air-to-air -air combat. So we want this sw switched from fix to gyro. And we want our, to set his wingspan up, and that's this knob here in meters, and we think he's 9.5 meters wingspan. So we're going to go there, 9.5. We're going to keep the depression set to zero, and then we're going to find him. When we find him, we are going to try and frame his wingspan so if we get him in the middle of our paper here, frame his wingspan between these carrots here and we control the size with the increase and decrease button as we showed earlier. Once we've framed him, then we can start firing essentially. Okay, we're closing on style now. Now the maximum range we can gauge because what we can do is set our distance to maximum like thus. And so the maximum range we can fire at is when his wingspan is essentially touching the circle created by these diamonds. Since you asked what the max range is, the max range you can set your gun sight to is 800 meters. Meters, Roger. Right, closing in now. I'm going to take a pop at you. I'm going to frame you and take a pop at you. And there's nothing you can do about it, Star. <laughs> Don't challenge me. God, it's harder than it looks. I can tell you that. Waste your ammo. You don't have much. God, no. Okay, this time we're going to get a little closer and show setting up the framing. So here he comes. Increasing our gun sight. Ah. Uh, I think that is going to be just about right there, and get him! Got him! Slinging fire. How does it feel, Charles? How does it feel? Uh, nice and warm on my butt, I like it. Good. Right, that is air to air guns. It, well, <laughs> I'll let you in a hotel, that's so funny. Oh! <laughs> good ending! <laughs> Why the hell not? Just because I can. Yeah, so if the, G if the GS-23 doesn't work, send a Hornet into it. Alright, anything you want to add to that, Charles? It's all pretty simple. Negative, actually. <laughs> cool, I hope that helps and see you later.